Well, seven years on and still haunted by that tragedy, we're joined from Sydney by Mel this morning. Mel, good morning to you. Good morning. It's still hard to listen back to that and it's, it takes me straight back to that day in December. Yeah. Well, you know, nothing you can say or we can say or do now can bring Jacintha back. I, I suppose what we're trying to do is in that seven years, trying to convey to people watching us this morning, what has it been like for you to live with what happened? Well, I mean, if I'm perfectly honest, it's been hard to live. There was a point um, about six months after the prank call where I contemplated whether I should still be here, the guilt that I felt for what happened and the trolling that I was going through. I was in isolation and people were continuously telling me, go kill yourself, go, you know, you don't deserve to be alive. So I did literally face the battle to save my own life. So you, you did think about, about ending your life then? I thought about whether it was an option for me and I remember sitting there on the bathroom floor just thinking, am I ever going to get through this? Is this what my life is like now? And I came to a, a conclusion that it was absolutely not the answer for me and it should never be the answer for anybody. So in that moment when I chose life, I decided to move forward and to learn what I could from what happened and maybe help other people in the future. And how have you found moving forward, Mel? Will people let you move forward or are you always going to be known, do you think, as that prank DJ girl? Do you know, it goes through phases. It depends on where I'm working and what I'm doing, but I kid you not, two weeks ago I had a contract torn up at a, a radio station and I hadn't mentioned the prank call or, or anything for two years and it still to this day affects my employment, my relationships, my friendships. It's, it's something that's always going to be there. I don't want it to define me, but I can't avoid it because it still interferes with my life. Mm. Hindsight is, is a great thing, but... Um... At, at the time, when you were there, you're on this fun show, uh, doing what you think is a, a fun jape. Um, had you any misgivings? At the time, we honestly did not think we'd get through and we did not think we'd get private information. But when that did in fact happen, I remember I, I wrote an email to the team saying, let's dub over the nurses' voices, let's take out the private information because it's not about that, it was never about that, it's about how silly our accents were and that's where the, the comedy, the humour was on us. And actually, for a couple of days, Mel, it was getting quite a lot of attention for being just that. Mm. A silly, funny prank. Even Prince Charles, we saw in the, uh, the video that we showed there, commented. People thought it was amusing. So when did you realise that it had turned so sour and, and how did you cope when you heard that news? So it was a progression through the week. We, we made the call on the Tuesday. I was obviously concerned, wrote the email. The day after the hospital came out and said there'd be no repercussions, that the, the nurses involved wouldn't be punished. OK, great. Prince Charles makes a joke. OK, everybody's OK with this. It's, it's time to laugh and think that everything's going to be OK. And, uh, you know, I'm embarrassed to admit I did enjoy a few moments of it because we were worldwide news and everybody was laughing with us, it appeared. Even, you know, American big talk shows in the UK, they were doing sketches on what happened. And then when tragedy struck, I think a lot of media outlets felt very embarrassed for uh, highlighting what we'd done and I feel that's where this huge witch hunt took place. Um, what about you? I mean, you even went to Jacintha's inquest. Why did you do that? When it happened, it was, it was almost instant that I went into a place that I, I, I struggled to explain what it was like, this intense guilt. And I remember when I found out, the first question I asked my bosses, was she a mother? And when they said yes, it, my whole life just turned into somebody's, somebody else's life. There was a moment after that for six hours I don't remember. I was like hovering, looking down at myself, not recognising me. And I could see myself standing on the balcony and my partner holding me back and I couldn't comprehend what was happening. That shock 
was so intense and the guilt that came with it, mm. it didn't go away until I felt I'd done what I could to redeem myself. And did you have any contact with Jacintha's family at that inquest? Did you talk to them at all? So my lawyer spoke to Jacintha's um, family's lawyer at the time uh, about whether they wanted me there because it was always about providing any unanswered questions for them. Uh, they welcomed me to the inquest, so I went there, wrote my will the night before, thinking that I wasn't going to be going back to Australia. And it was, it was very intense. It, there was a, a few very scary moments. But to be there gave me that closure and I feel at the end of the inquest when I looked the family in the eye and apologised, I felt a connection with Jacintha's daughter and I could see that she knew I didn't take that joke as, as a joke. I took it seriously with what happened and I was so sorry for what happened to her mother. Mel, um, you now believe, one of the reasons we're talking to you is you now believe that you can make a difference because of this experience? In, in what way? I've been given a profile that just won't go away. Uh, there's articles written about me constantly. So I got to a point where I'm like, OK, well, if I'm going to be in the press, I may as well make it for a good reason. And whether it's talking about endometriosis, which is a condition that one in ten women suffer, suffer from, or whether it's mental health, I was a normal, happy healthy girl. This tragedy turned into major depression and it took a long time to get through. And that can happen to anybody. We all go through bad things. So when we talk about it, uh, the cyberbullying I went through to be able to help our most vulnerable children who are told to kill themselves and they are killing themselves. So I try and raise awareness for all of those things with the platform I've been given. Mel, good luck to you uh, with the future. Thanks for taking the time uh, talking to us and we hope you do make a difference from, from here on in. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Mel. Thank you. Thanks. Bye -bye. So that was Mel Gregg there and um, former radio host and uh, we were discussing there the, the tragic death of Jacintha Saldana and the impact it's had on Mel's life. Mm -hmm.